So this episode uh, is on uh, Marissa Acosella, I assume it's Acosella, it might be Acosella, uh, Marchetto's Cancer Vixen. Um, this is a uh, graphic memoir, which means that it's a memoir written in the style of a graphic novel. Um, this is the greatest memoir that I've ever read by far. Um, it is entertaining, it is enjoyable to read. I read it in two sittings and it probably is what, about 200 pages. It probably took me about three hours to read in total. Um, in terms of, of memoirs, I would give this 10 out of 10. This, this is a, I would argue, if you're an adult, read Cancer Vixen because it is just fantastic. Um, on the importance of this book, uh, this book was read as part of my health and literature class. Uh, so we got another one of those. Um, and really this book is designed to be, or was designed to be in contrast to Susan Sontag's illness as a metaphor and cancer that was earlier discussed. Um, because in Cancer Vixen, uh, Marchetto gets diagnosed with cancer and it's about her story through the diagnosis and then the, the treatments and then, you know, living after that. Um, and one of, the, one of the key tenets really is, is that Marchetto is not fighting the cancer diagnosis. She's willing to get treated and she's willing to get help, right? Versus the uh, traditional way of thinking about cancer and the one that uh, Sontag provides, which is that we have to, you know, fight, fight, fight. Um, and it's about the victim of cancer, uh, which is how we get Cancer Vixen. That is a play on victim in of itself. She's not a cancer victim, she's a cancer vixen. Um, but it's, it's important to know that, like, this idea of, of how cancer is traditionally seen and how Marchetto was dealing with cancer appear in contrast throughout the novel I shouldn't say the novel because it's not a work of fiction throughout the memoir um and really it's it's most interesting when you compare Marchetto's experiences and what she's thinking to what her friends are thinking at the time um, or what she writes that we're friends with the other time, or her experiences uh, at a fundraiser at one point, right? Because what ends up happening is they catch Marchetto's cancer at very fairly early stage, uh, and so therefore they don't have to do really heavy chemo. They they do they do really light chemo. It doesn't cause Marchetto to lose her hair. It thins her hair, but it doesn't cause her to lose it. Um, but like, it's one of those like no true Scotsman arguments, right? Where Marchetto had to deal with what it's what it, having cancer is like. But from a traditional way of looking at cancer, she didn't have true cancer, uh, which is unfortunate to to think that way because we don't want to think that way. Um, and, and Marchetto really kind of comes to, comes to be able to deal with, with that argument, um, of where she was being, a one of the New York it people, uh, had to deal with being an outsider to the it's now, but also now an outsider to what should have been a welcoming community, uh, because hers wasn't as bad. Um, 
absolutely fantastic read. Um, it's not super long. Um, it is very, very, very entertaining. Um, when was this published? It was published in 2004, I think. I want to say 2004. Um, yeah. Highly recommend Cancer Vixen. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, it is not my favorite book, but it is my favorite memoir, right? It's it's my top, top of the memoir list. Um, so yeah, read Cancer Vixen. Uh, Mark Shadow has a very, very interesting art style. It's great, it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, that's it. Go health and literature.